Hello everyone. I haven't been peeking for a while, I haven't made a video for a while, so I hope it works out. In front of me is a French, quite interesting lock, it's Picard VG. Um, here it says so on a key even. And this one is uh, in a trident body, as far as I know. There is a quite nice video from uh, Locks Nest on it where he explains the uh, principle. I will go quickly over it as well, just to show what are we dealing with before I pick it. It's half disassembled here and it's working. So I can open it and close it. And I want to show what's inside because it's quite different from and tumbler locks and even from other French Brahma style locks. So um, it is Brahma style lock. Here is the core. It's being blocked by those plates here and the rotation is being blocked by the sliders which are inside. I hope they are kind of visible. There are eight of them and they are being held by one spring in the middle. So if we get them out, just to show the principle, I won't take them out completely. You see there is a now it turns because the sliders are out from the core and I hope you can see there is a when one very thick spring. Uh, two ends are inserted in kind of caps. One is on this side and another one on the other side. And the sliders, they all have these kind of hooks on both sides. So the spring is in the middle of the slider and pushes them all uh, outside. So whichever slider I push, that's uh, all on the same spring. And when the first slider gets pushed in, all the rest are pretty much unsprung, which gives some challenges in terms of tensioning. Um, the sliders have true gates, this one and false gates. They also have kind of notches on the side. Um, and with them being unsprung, um, it's quite special picking experience. So let's get it back together and let me show my tools that I use. So I think no one has picked it on camera before. So if that works out nicely, I'm going to be first. Yay. Um, let me show you this cap. There are some warding bits on the sides. They go in here. That's anti-drill, it's outside. Um, I just put the numbers here to ease um, numbering. Okay, let's put it back together. And I will show the key and the, oh, yeah. There are some screws on this side first. Which, uh, and I put it back wrong way. So bear with me for a second. That's wrong. That's right orientation. Now this is correct. Sorry for that. One screw. Another screw. This is interior side, this is exterior side. Here we go. 
those into the body. Two more screws and we are good to go. Right, while I'm putting it back together, let me tell how I'm going to tension it. Because just sticking something in and turning doesn't really help. Because the, the spring is, well, that's really, really strong. And holding it um, would be quite hard. So the lock works. All good. Um, so here are a bunch of um, tools that I tried using. That um, was my first attempt. I wanted to have separate tools. One to release the tension from the spring. And it works nicely. I really do it this way and then tension from the other side. But it gets really, really crowded inside. So picking is kind of hard, so I discarded those. And I made this. You might notice it resembles the shape of the key quite well. So this middle um, spike presses on the spring, releases the tension from all the sliders. And I hook in this uh, tab in the body so that I can pick the lock. So now it's in. Let me get myself some room inside. Push it away a little so that I can actually Yeah, now it's nice. Right, the spring tension is released. And now, well, that's another hook that I made and hope to be able to move the sliders both ways, but it didn't quite work. Uh, there is just too little space. So I'm going to use this multi-pick hook and a custom made hook just to get them back if I need so to do so. Um, it's really helpful to be able to see the sliders and in order to find the binders and I'm just, you know, I cannot show it to you, but I will be just looking inside with a hand torch. And when I move the core back and forth, and that nice thing, I don't have to hold it one way. The spring tension is released, so I can move it all I want. Um, I'm looking which slider moves, and that is my binder. Also, the sliders on the lower side of the core are better visible, so I will start with them. Um, you might have noticed that um, the sliders are made from a kind of sheet and they are bent together, so uh, they have some resistance when they move and they keep their position when released. So let's get going. I'll start at number one. And I think it's where it should be. Now, when I move the core, number two moves, so let's move it. Yeah, lots of resistance, so it's binder. Click. That should be in a, one of the gates. Now, number three moves a lot, so let's move this one. And to confirm that I pick, found the right one. I see how much resistance it offers. So yeah, it resists a lot. Okay, it's got somewhere, let's see. It doesn't move, it still moves this way. So either it's overset, which is totally possible, or it's still underset. Our setting is kind of pain in the ass because getting them back was you have to get behind the slider and that's really not nice. Okay, three seems to be fine. Now number zero seems to be 
moving, so I think it's a binder. And those numbers come from the markings on the sliders themselves, so it's not just random. Okay, zero. It could also be in a kind of gate, so I have to release tension first, push it a little, and then, okay, something happened. Now I think number two is binding again. Number one, when I put it this way, ah, number zero. So probably they're both in false gates. Let's see. Doesn't really want to move. Now let's go to number two. Okay, nice click and core rotation. So two is an A gate, doesn't have to be the gate, a true one. Okay, now zero is still moving around. So let's see what I can do about it. Okay, more core movement. And now you see it moves more. Okay, which one is the next one? See number six and four is tricky. Think number six now is the one that I need to work on. And it offers some resistance, so yeah, click. No, it's number seven. And I'm leaving number five for the very end because it's so hard to see it and so easy to overset and not really a way to get it back if I do overset it. Okay, even more movement. Okay, and you see that starts moving. So it might be time for five, but before that I'll check number three and four again. Yeah, they might be in the right positions. Okay, let's risk number five. I had to restart so often when I tried doing it too early. But yeah, it's resisting, so. And that's an open. Yay! Now let me show you the full rotation. I have to hold it next in this position, not to lose the tensioner. And here is a full turn. It's locked, you see, and now we can unlock it again. Unlocked and the latch. Okay, that went easier than I thought. So now let's got it completely and show you all the internals. That we don't need, that we do need, okay. One screw. Another screw. Okay, that can go apart for all I care now. And here is the part for the interior side, holding it all together. The nose. Here, 
all the warding and stuff that we don't really need anymore. And where is another bit? Here it is. Here goes the uh, no idea how to call this ring, but that's the one that actually prevents the core from moving. And the way it's done, sometimes I got kind of open where it kind of moved for a quarter of a turn, but it was still in a false gate somewhere. And then stopped. And that was really annoying. of the ring and here is the actual core and now I hope I will not have to hunt for the spring somewhere and that's the way that I have to remove it Let's see. Okay, that's not how I intended it to go, but it should work just fine. I hope. Kind of. Well, you see the spring now, big thick one, the two caps that go on one side and on the other side, the core, and here go all the sliders. them a little and show them to you nicely okay so you can see that there are marks up there visible here is one two three four five six seven and here are all the gates and all so most of them have true and false gates except number three and number seven which are on the opposite sides and they also have slightly longer noses and then six also have no false gates but does have the serrations and that's how they're done okay well first public pick on camera for picard Luigi. thanks for watching